uh, uh, Paul Paul wandered in there. Paul, go ahead and just come right uh, across camera here. Just watch the uh, wires and have a seat. All right. And uh, thank you for uh, stopping by. Paul Mercurio now in the studio. Yeah. So did you end up on Bubba's show? Did what you... the hell is wrong with you guys? <laughs> um, what do you the mean? The GPS took, this, took us to 5021, but it, we put 5019 in there. Well, th- I'd, I'd be yelling at a GPS or Siri. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think you're right. I think that there was, uh, I think uh, somebody, yeah. I'm okay. I'm good now. That's all right. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome into the studio. We're very excited to have you here yeah. in a town this weekend. Let's see. Putting you right up over your head there. Oh, look, at look at that. Wow. I'm sexy. I want to kiss me. Look how cute I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, a couple things. Well, we have uh, our listeners right now are our viewers. It's a Facebook live stream. Facebook yeah. live uh, slash the wake dot show. the camera? Hey, everybody. Yep. And um, you said you wanted to give away some passes to which show? Um, to uh, I'm at the Tampa Improv tonight. Ybor tomorrow. City. Ybor City. Yep. Tonight, tomorrow, and who's that guy? He looks like it's a Star Trek thing. He's got all those sh- yeah. screens in front of him. What's yeah. up, buddy? He's hey, got, man. He's well, got well, lasers. Stre- That's Johnny. Hey, yeah. Johnny. So we're streaming live on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, this helps us run all the cameras That's and all awesome, that stuff man. and uh, makes cool. it happen. Yeah. Can I make porn when we're done? Here? Yeah, you sure can. Well, we can do it live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the other studio. Yeah. That's why there was a goat in here. I didn't know yeah. what the goat was for. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> I see what the thing. And all, the, and all the plastic on the floor. Yeah, we, exactly. We, we uh, well, I have that right at now. my house, you know, for the dead bodies. And uh, no, Tampa Improv, Ybor City, tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. We'll give tickets away to the 10 o'clock show tonight and the Sunday show. All right, the 10 o'clock show tonight, the Sunday show, that's 8 o'clock? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, put in the comment section whether or not you want to go tonight or on Sunday, and then how many uh, uh, can we pick from both of those? Um, you can do a total of uh, 12 tickets, so 6 and 6, or all right. however, however it works out. But, all yeah. right, total. To- Total of 12 tickets, and then what we'll do is uh, message you afterwards. And if we get over 12 and it gets crazy, we'll do some even more. But uh, right. just we need first and last name, um, social security number, and bank routing number. Um, <laughs> if you, if you know, it just it's not me, it's the club, and I want a car, so I'm gonna uh, buy one now. You're credit card no. as, as you can see you well, go Cords to Imp- likes giving away cars apparently <laughs> as you can see uh, you go to improvtampa.com to uh, get your tickets you can also uh, call 813-864-4000 yeah. um, now you've been uh, I, I want to start with he wants to talk to you about Red Eye because that's one of his favorite oh, shows. Oh, yeah, Red Eye. Run. I used to go on that with Greg Gutfeld. I know, man. That's such a great show. I know you got to sit in the ombudsman chair. Yeah, um, that was fun. Did you see the one where the cord got stuck under my the chair? The blooper, yeah. I saw that the blooper like, reel. That was so crazy. Big fan of uh, Greg and Andy and those guys. Yeah, that was know. a fun show. When Bill was on it, Bill Schultz. Yep. I thought that that was the best show in the best version of that show. It, and it was probably at its in its time. It was probably the greatest hidden secret uh, Is it television. not on anymore? No. Uh, I think there's a variation no, of it. No, it, 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 it got canceled. Is it done? Yeah, yeah they so tried it, another host and it didn't work. Yeah, and, and uh, I just, like, we would just have a lot of fun, and then we'd always get topics ahead of time and then veer off the topics. And then I would, I like to say stuff on Fox News that would get them cranky. Like, I, <laughs> you might have seen this if you watch it all the time. Remember there cranky. was... Um, I think it was Brett Favre. It's so funny because it comes full circle with this whole sexual harassment thing now. But Brett Favre, there was a, a female sports reporter or something, and apparently he like hit on her or something like that. And oh, oh no, I sent do. pictures of his junk. That's what he did. <laughs> and so I was saying on Fox News with a panel of men and women, I'm like, uh, oh, I, I I get that you're not supposed to do that, but are women completely freaked out it's like a penis you've all seen a penis you've done things with penis and now you can see like people on fox are like oh my god he's saying penis but it's like three o'clock in the morning right and i and i and i say uh because it's a penis oh you know i'm not i'm not saying you should send your junk to a woman but a woman you've seen your penis everybody's seen a penis you've done things to a penis like do you get a two by two grainy picture of a phone on a phone and go oh my god what is this i don't know what do i do like what uh, uh, i don't know <laughs> like, what, like what do i uh, uh, uh right and they're, you're gonna they were all like oh i'm like no really i mean you know that there's i mean oh so you were doing that you were the do it the pantomiming on television i was doing the whole oh, that's thing great. I was like i didn't care and there was like and nobody even like the afterwards like i maybe went a little far with that but like, but, but it was true i'm like because i'm like if i put my penis on a phone it's a, it looks like a little baby bald eagle asleep in a nest that's all <laughs> yeah you want to pet it feed it and release it into the wild <laughs> we're not going to get thrown off facebook for this are we we don't know yet we all right know okay what, we have I no can say penis that's nothing that's not doing oh there's anything. far worse on facebook yeah yeah so yeah that was a fun show and um um but 
you know, I don't know. It just kind of took a turn, and then they, Bill left, and it was okay. But Bill was Bill was actually good because it's hard to be a co-host of a show and know when to jump in, and more importantly, not to jump in. And Bill was really good at that. Like the timing. Yeah, like sometimes you get a guest on that doesn't talk a lot, and then you got to kind of help it out, you know. But uh, yeah, it was fun, and then we would go out afterwards, and you know, have a few, and it was uh, it was like a small, uh, it was just like a small hang. It was really cool. And then you know, when it well, was, and they had phenomenal numbers too. Again, it was, I mean, they were beating well, some of show the MSNBC midnight... primetime shows. But wait, wasn't this like a midnight show? One o'clock in the morning. Three in the morning. Oh, three yeah. in the morning. Three yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And and they had better numbers than some of the NBC primetime MSNBC primetime shows. Huh. Yeah, I couldn't figure out why they didn't move it up. You know what I mean? In, Me neither. I thought it would have been great. Like in, uh, it didn't feel like Fox when you watched. Hmm? It didn't feel like Fox when you watched it. It felt like you were watching something different. Yeah. Oh exactly. yeah. And that was the, that was the beauty of it. You know, like uh, had the legs chair and the legs chair, which I always I wa- wanted to be in, and I couldn't. I mean, boy, it was so shocking that there was sexual harassment at Fox when they had a leg <laughs> chair. Like they would literally make the woman. That was old, the name of it. It was That's called the leg chair. So, so in other words, th- 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 imagine. This is about the setup, right? So Greg would sit over there and, the, and, and sort of do his thing to camera here. And then there'd be a few of us. And then on the end, because you, it was the only shot where you could see a full body shot. That's where the female with the do, short skirt would have here, to hold go. Here, hold this. Hold that a second. Hang on. And then they go like that. And see, you see my hairy Italian legs with my <laughs> socks pulled over. Hence why up. he was never in the legs chair. Go to the beach later and scan for coins. <laughs> <laughs> And they would sit because it was the only shot. See, right, you, Chris, you don't get. And it was called the leg chair. And they only put the women. And I that never is too saw funny. Women. And they were always in skirt. In yeah. skirt. Oh and yeah. All like they blonde hair. And we're, I went on one time though, and it freaked me out because I'm I'm looking over and I'm talking to this woman and she's got, she's uh you know she's got one of those like uh, strapless dresses you know right, and you could see her shoulders and she was pretty and everything and you know that sort of m- m- sort of model type look. Like what you know that that sort of central casting Fox News like bleach blonde hair and all that right. stuff. Right. But as I'm as I'm talking to her, there's like it's glitter. Like her shoulders are glittering, and I now we're talking about like news of the day on Fox News. Right. Exactly, it's the same look in, in your face. And I notice she has glitter makeup on her shoulders, like a prom girl, like going to the prom. <laughs> and I'm like, I remember saying to myself, what, where am I? What am I doing? Like, am I on Fox news or am I in the back seat of my mother's Oldsmobile and about to make out with this girl? Like, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> well, they have a sh- They have a show that is called like the luckiest guy in the world or something. Oh, I've done that too. Where, outnumbered. You're, you're, you outnumbered. You put in the middle. Where they just, they sit a dude <laughs> in the middle. Guy in the world. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> outnumbered is okay. Same. Yeah, exactly. And sure. they have, yeah, you are flanked on both sides right. by a total, I think of four women. They're yeah, all two gorgeous. Two. Yeah. They're all gorgeous they're all in little tight uh you know dresses yeah but they're also very intelligent they're not just bimbo yeah. sitting up there uh, well i don't uh, know about that uh, <laughs> there well, are they all have degrees they're lawyers and stuff i went after stacy uh, stacy dash was on and that was the one i couldn't like whatever and i don't even care that this shit goes out she can see it i don't care she just was like saying stuff and it was so ridiculous like it she, not because of her politics it's like it was clear like she didn't prepare she uh. would we were talking about Obama. We were talking about something, the CDC. And she goes, oh, Obama hates America. And all you're doing is just like feeding the meat to the lions that people were watching. Sure. And I'm like, come on, say she something else. She knows who else. the audience like, is. Obama hates America. I mean, you know. He's, all right, Kanye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. We want to see his birth certificate next. You've, you know, so she. So I, I just was like, you know. Well, man, has she aged well. Oh, oh. Oh my God, she was my crush back when she was on Clueless. Oh, you really? And she's still gorgeous. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, at least from what I've seen on TV and in pictures. I mean, you would know you saw her in person, but I have some photos of her that she's not aware of that I took. <laughs> um... <laughs> As he starts to lick his phone again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, where are you, my Stacy? <laughs> uh, but yeah. So anyway, that was that was a fun show, and I went Kennedy. I would go on that show a bunch on Fox Business, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's. It's good. You know, if, if you get the right mix of people, it can be really good. Uh, on the show today, Paul Mercurio is going to be at the Improv all weekend yes, long. Yes, showing my legs. Oh, look, I'm in the leg chair now. Yes, you are. Woo! 813-864-4000 to get your This uh, is tickets. really cool, this setup. This well, thank really you, because I want to ask you about this, yeah. uh, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and for those of you that want to go check him out tonight 
at a 10 o'clock at the Improv, because you'll have two shows tonight, two shows on Saturday, one on Sunday, either tonight, the 10 o'clock show, or the Sunday show, leave a comment, okay? And we will pick six of you for tonight, six of you for Sunday, to go check them out. <laughs> Come out, people, and see me. <laughs> That's I actually do. I have a baby in my act, and uh, I change it, and then I juggle two babies. That baby has a name. What's the baby's name? Rant Baby. Rant Baby? Yeah, so, Rant Baby. When so, all of a sudden I start getting off on something, and I get worked up about something that's usually not important, I, uh, I'll, get, I'll get the sign, and I'll have to put Rant Baby in front of my face. Oh, can I talk about sexual harassment? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, as a baby. So here's the thing about sexual harassment. <laughs> um, uh, like, I... I think it's great that women uh, are coming forward. I think it's necessary. And I think all these guys are creeps. Can I swear a little bit? Or yeah, yeah. Assholes. And, um, <laughs> oh, it's, this is so awesome. Asshole, asshole. Hey, but of course I want more food. What are you, an asshole? <laughs> Will you somebody change me, dickhead? This is so awesome. I should have done this years ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm not stealing your bit or anything, am no, I? No, not at all. All right, okay. That's so, what it's for. That's what it's for. Uh, I think the kid, I'm not sure. This kid may be growing up gay. I'm not sure <laughs> just what the thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, so let's move on. So I, uh, so basically, I, my thing about sexual harassment is, first of all, Garrison Keillor, really? Like, that's like, your gr that's like a sloth like doing sexual harassment like how slow is he when he harassed like <laughs> and then and then charlie rose it's like a creepy old grandfather and then and then and then and then you're like i get that like it, why would you put your entire career at jeopardy the guys that like don't do anything except do like masturbate in front of somebody or have to take a shower like you're not even getting a cop a field Grab a boob or something. <laughs> stick your finger in a hole. I don't know. But like, if you're gonna put, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go to that length and put your career in jeopardy, get something out of it for God's sake. That's all I'm saying. I'm not encouraging it. But what's next? Is like, am I gonna find out like Clifford the Big Red Dog has been like <laughs> harassing people in the cartoon? Like, it was emo a couple years ago. Remember? Emo, you're right. Or, I mean, or Elmo, Elmo, not emo. Uh, Elmo. Elmo. Tickle, tickle oh, me Elmo, way, yeah. I met that guy. They were doing a documentary, and they had just finished a documentary on that guy when this who, behind the Elmo thing, and it came out that he was, like, molesting or bothering oh, kids, and they couldn't air it. They couldn't do anything with the documentary. I watched it. It was on Netflix. Oh, it did end up on it Netflix? It did end up on Netflix, yeah. Oh, it did. With one of those things at the end, uh, <laughs> after, after yeah. it ends, you know, then all, of a sudden, all of a sudden the text scrolls. <laughs> hey, You're Rant Baby, take off your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rant Baby. <laughs> Elmo love you. Elmo love you naked. Yay. All right, so uh, when, when we were setting up this, because I said I want to talk to you about, about this, about this era, because uh, you've been doing this a long time. Right. Um, and you would go into a town normally, and when you would do media, you'd hit up some radio stations, the, yeah, the local did that television. Yeah, today and yesterday. The local television show would yeah. put you out. Now yeah. you're getting to a town, and uh, people are trying to get you onto their podcast, their live stream, yeah. and you got to figure out which ones are you know worth going on, and the, which ones where you walk in and go, what the? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? Does your mom know you're doing <laughs> <Right>. this? Exactly. <laughs> well, I did do one, and it turns out they were human traffickers, and um, <laughs> and I got arrested. I just got into the train, and then you know. So you got to kind of you know yeah, I, you do some due I, diligence I, there. Yeah, you got to like really feel. It. No, you know it's funny because I didn't. I've never met you before, and this was just a conversation on the phone. I think I woke you up when I talked to you. Sound like you had like yes. a, you were like, eh, yeah. Eh, and then yeah. I'm like, is this guy doing oral or what's going on? Yeah, well, here? I was both. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was like, I got recommended to you, and that was good enough for me. And it's like, show up and because this is sort of the new wave and the next wave of like how you get to people and get people to come out and you can do stuff that you can't do. I couldn't do that. I, I went on ABC morning television. I couldn't do that yesterday. Oh, no. Their head would have exploded. It's funny. He calls me back the next day. Uh, cause I was also in my mind too, cause this is a brand new show. We just started this a month ago. Oh, that's awesome. you know, we're still, we're still building numbers. Our reach is really good. I mean, every, we're very excited about what's going on, but we still aren't. This guy's like your Gelman. That's what he is. Like from, <laughs> yes. you're the producer, right? To a, in a, to no, I no. You're, you're a producer because you have like a really nice shirt on and button all the way up. You're the guy that like f knows how to fire somebody in a nice way. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sorry. You're just, getting closer. Right. You're getting warmer. It, it's just yeah, exactly. It's just not working out. Do you ever think laying concrete that would be a good job for you? Or putting bricks in, you know. Uh, so so yeah, Paul, no. I think this is really cool. So Paul calls me the uh, next day. I'm a little bit more awake. 
And by the way, you can't get enough gray paint to cover up the scratches up there. What are we doing <laughs> yeah. here? It's a freaking studio, for God's sake. All right, go ahead. Um, yeah, that's a good point. We didn't even think about it. There's one right behind you, a nice little <laughs> hole in the wall there. <laughs> that's actually from a shelf that was there that fell. <laughs> but um, uh, he calls me the next day after he finds out that our studio is right next to Bubba the Love Sponge. And for people here in the Bay Area, everybody knows Bubba. And I thought it was a building in your office was next to it. Oh, I see. That's I see. what I thought. And so he goes... Uh, and the guy at Bubba was nice in the building, but he goes... I don't know where 5019 is. And I'm like, you're 5021, so it's either going to be to the left or your right. <laughs> I swear to freaking God. So now I'm freaking out because you told me it was 7 to 9. So right. I'm in the car. It's and then my temper goes, starts going, whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to miss this. And God damn it, right? And he goes, I don't know where 5019 is. And I wanted to punch him in the face. I'm like, and, and so he's on the phone trying to figure out. And then I get on the phone with you and you're like, yes, the next building over. I'm like, how do you not know that? Because it's new because I've been going back and forth with him on a couple of things. And I told him that I'm next door, but I don't think it really dawned on him. Well, that's the him. other thing. He goes, oh, yeah, this has happened a couple of times. Well, then how do you not know where the building is? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's dawned on him that I, when I say we're next door, we're literally next door yeah, to them. Yeah. So, yeah, he texts me. He goes, I think another one of your guests are here. <laughs> your guest stopped here where in proximity is your studio and i go next door lol he goes really lol had no clue <laughs> but it's funny because but see this is why i'm moving out of america like people like you can't even do the math 5021 minus 2 is 5019 and generally it goes every two i'm willing to bet money he looked it up on google maps like well he was starting to and i'm like and i'm in the park he goes i don't know and he starts to do this thing and i'm like and I'm not trying to be mean to the guy, whoever you are. You're, you're nice enough, but you really should be castrated so that you don't have other kids. Um, no. Uh, and, he, and I'm like, can, you're looking it up? I thought he'd just go, oh, yeah, 5019 is right, right next door. And then you, did, you said the green doors, and I found it. Well, I, I thought what would happen today is you'd you know, you'd, uh, go, I'm not going on some, I don't know who the idiot is. I'm not going on some podcast or Facebook Live or whatever it is they're doing. I'm going to go on Bubba the Love Sponge, you know, that's on the no, radio. No, absolutely not. I was coming here. I, I, well, I, listen, Abs are you kidding me? I got stuff to talk about. Sexual harassment and how I hate people. And Well, I wanted annoying. to ask you, you have a bit, and I didn't get to watch it, but you have a bit on your YouTube channel about Trump. And so uh, one of the things that we kind of struggle with as a show mm. is do we incorporate Trump as a part of our show on a daily basis because he is such a central figure to the news cycle. And so to you, I mean, do you find yourself having to address Trump as part of your act because it's so much of what's happening, not only in news culture, but in pop culture? You know, I was a little bit, but um, there's a couple of problems with that. Is like One is um, I think people want to get away from it because it's out there so much. Um, and then the other thing is uh, it's there was a time when you could talk about politics and I still do but it's very divisive so if people can't take a joke about their own person yeah. their own side and I go after both sides because it's all I mean Nancy Pelosi still running the de well, eighth time's a charm good for you right <laughs> you know what I mean you know what I'm saying she should be doing aging cream commercials like on on, the, be, on QVC she should be using the aging cream yeah exactly uh, and and then, you know, Trump is, you know, Trump is the only thing about Trump. And, 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 you know, you also I don't know if your viewers are Trump fans or whatever. But for Trump, for me, it's not even the politics. Like I have a podcast. I had the Charlie Sykes on who's a conservative radio host out of Wisconsin. And he has a book out about how the right lost its mind. And he makes a really good point. It's very tribal. Nobody can take a joke about their own side. And so what ended up happening is um, he said the the, lib, the the conservative media is to blame for Trump because they started this idea of don't listen to the liberal media. They're fake. That the conservative media started that, but they, yeah, that's create, they created this monster yeah. that that swallowed up reasonable conservatives like his. His shows off the air because people started attacking him because he was part of the Never Trump movement. So what ends up happening is, um, you know, you've got these people that don't have a sense of humor on either side about anything. So for me, for Trump, where he lost me was way back in the beginning of the primaries where they'd ask him a question and he didn't know anything about the thing. And it was like, okay, okay, you don't know anything. You just go, I got to study up on that. I'm new to this. And you're like, okay, I'm like a reasonable guy. I'm not a conservative, but I'll listen to somebody on the other side and see what they have to say. But he didn't do that. What he did was he went, 
Why are you asking me that? You're just it's like he would get mad at people for having an expectation that he knows something about the job that he's trying to get. And you can't do that. That's like a doctor who's standing over a patient and goes, what's all that red stuff in the body? <laughs> oh, that's blood doctor. Oh, it was that thing that's moving. That's the heart. What does the heart do? Don't you think you should know what that is? Why are you attacking me? Are you the liberal media? And that's where I said, I'm done with you because you're insulting my intelligence that you think that I should vote for you and not have an expectation that you know what the fuck you're talking about. And another reason why I think a lot of people can't, well, you, you know, we are in a very divisive time. So as soon as you go down that path, people all of a sudden, if they're right here with you, yeah. they've gone out to their fringe yeah. of where, oh, wait, yeah. hold on, hold on. Where's this guy going with this yeah, joke? Exactly. And the reason that a lot of people can't laugh at their own party, their own ideology is because jokes have to be what? based in a truth a shared truth between yeah. the two, uh, the teller and the listener yeah exactly and and so if you're cracking on their party a lot of times that that truth is not shared with the person or the group yeah, but of people you should you're... be able to have a sense of humor about it you know what i mean like i don't care that somebody voted for trump and their his politics align with yours but you you know roy moore and you know he's allegedly you know you know, diddling little girls behind an, an Applebee's, which I would have done it behind the Waffle House. But, you know, that you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like uh, it's like uh, I, I just it's it's frustrating and it's sad. Like when I go on Fox News, I get attacked by conservatives. If I say anything slightly liberal or if I go on CNN, say which it. I do, then the then the, the conservatives will be like, you're a jerk. And uh, Brooke Baldwin's an idiot or they'll say mean things. To, and, and it's like. It's unnecessary and it makes it not fun. So like, I don't know, you know, and I just think there's a, there's enough to go around for everybody. Like there's enough bullshit out there that like I, I, I feel like you should be able to say what you want to say. People laugh at it. Have So I, I kind of I weave it in a little bit. You know what I mean? But I'm not like bashing over the head. Now, there are some comics like that have an agenda like I, we hate I hate Trump and he's just going to they're going to. Well, that's more of a political comedian. And that's really not what I'm interested in doing because I. I'm not going to try to change somebody's mind, you know. But like what Johnny was saying, when, you know, when it comes to how we want to approach this show, you know, not uh, before this show, I was doing some AM talk. Yeah. So of course, that's going to be conservative leaning, right. and I, I had a conservative partner. I get to play the middle, right. and he can, you know, in, in satiate the need of the uh, the right. listener. Right. Um, but here, we, you know, this is we we don't know what we're doing here. We don't know who we're yeah, targeting but you're, you're, here. But you're going to figure it out, and then at some point, the same thing with me. You got to decide if you're going to listen to these people or say, you know what, this is what I do. If you don't like it, don't watch. That's a and good then point. you'll have your viewers like I'm not going to change like there's this whole thing like with the PC thing that's gone too far I'm not doing a bit this is a true story um, because people want to create controversy when there's no controversy okay? isn't everything you say coming out of your mouth a true story uh, actually in my case it is <laughs> I almost got arrested on Amtrak because I got in a fight with the conductor I pulled my pants down on 86th Street in Manhattan and told the guy to fuck me in the ass over a bag I got banned from a market over a red onion um, I, I got in a fight over I did this last this one, this next one, in my last stand-up uh, appearance on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, where I got in a big fight over a scoop of tuna. So I get in confrontations with people because I think people are assholes, and when they're assholes, I say something because I'm like, like a human speed bump, and I'm going to change their behavior. But then it turns into like a, a shit storm. But So it, almost everything in my act is a true story now because I just talk about my life, which is what I really like. All right, but this next story is a story, not a bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, this story, my stories are story. I mean, I can give you a bit. Oh, the, you're, you're, the I, lazy I, eye gets a bad rap. Why? Because maybe that eye's not lazy. What if the other eye's an overachiever? That's a bit. <laughs> all right, I'm, so in, I, I'm in the park. This is the thing about right. people wanting to create controversy. I'm in the park, Central Park. I live in New York, and I'm walking my dog, and I, we have a dog on a leash. You have to have your dog on a leash in New York. And a guy doesn't have his dog on a leash, and the guy, the dog looks aggressive. Now, right now, I already don't like the guy because this guy decided, fuck the rest of the world. I'm going to do what I want to do, which is why I don't like people, and I want to live on an island, right? So I say, sir, your dog looks, a, you know, kind of whatever. You really should be on a leash. And I said it just like that. I wasn't like, and he goes, why? Because it's a pit bull? Like implying that I was racist toward pit bulls? And I literally blurted out, no, because it's got a fucking baby in its mouth, the right, asshole? Because it just shit a family of six, okay? But there's stuff that we did when we were kids that you can't do now. Like, every Halloween, my parents would send me as a hobo because it was the easiest thing That's to right. do. You can't do that today. A hobo's a homeless person. People would be all up your shit. Like, uh, but my, think about it. My parents sent me out onto the streets at night to collect free food in front of real homeless people. And it sucked. I never got candy. Every house, baked beans and a harmonica. It sucked. <laughs> and so, so what ends up happening is 
you can use the stand up as a way to talk about what you want to talk about. And if they like it, fine. And if they don't like it, then you go somewhere else. Like I was at a club in New York working on some stuff and there was a couple in the back and I was talking to them and um, I don't even know if any of this is funny. I hope no, I'm it's, funny listen, at the it's, club, by the way. Listen, no, no, no. By, by, I, I uh, you know, every now and again throughout my career. I don't like career, doing bits, bits and interviews. Like I don't I like that either. Talk. I'm I just trying to be me yes. and be funny so people say, oh, he's funny and he comes and, and see And you don't me. always have to be funny. I know that, that's that's your, that's well, that, cause you I have get, to. I want people to come see me, too. You know what I mean? They, but, if I'm saying I'm a comedian and I'm not funny, like I don't, I don't get comics that go on shows and they don't want to do any talk about anything funny. It's like, well, you're trying to sell a car, but you don't want anybody to sample the car. Like, that's what this but is. But I also think it's very compelling to listen to, you know, comedians, you know, just talk. Talk about the things that are in their yeah. head. Because, yeah. listen, you can't help you it. find me pretty compelling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the more you unbutton your shirt, the more yeah. compelling you become. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I just think it's, we, it was just having this conversation with somebody that works at the club yesterday about, like, what do you do? What do you say? Where do you go? And I'm just, and for me, I just do this for me. And then if you like it, great. Um, and I feel like you should never, ever, ever worry about what they think because then, then they're running your show. Right. And if they want to do it, then let them go out and you know work the road for 10 years and whatever. Now, that's not to mean you're going to be an asshole either and like, eh, fuck you, whatever. But you can just kind of do your thing. And like, I feel like, more and more, I push back. The more, like, like, like race, right? Race is a big thing in the country, right? Always has been. And I'm a white male, so I'm the last guy that's supposed to say anything about race because I'm the oppressor. Right. We're all white here. Right, right. Thank God. And uh, when I come in the building, I'm like, if I see one minority, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> well, um, he, he fools everybody. Yeah. He's Colombian. Yeah. I Johnny love, is. Uh, exactly. Johnny's oh, Colombian. He fools everybody. I love the three Ks on the outside. They're not all... <laughs> No, I got it. You separated them enough so it just looked like three Ks. But if you go cross-eyed, they come together. Fucking brilliant. You are a brilliant racist producer, Gelman. And, uh, and uh, so, so, so now you're all laughing. But honestly, one of you went like, like that because I'm white. If I were black, and I'm not doing a bit right now. I'm just like having fun. So I, I, did, I did hear you go into this. On, on one of your YouTube videos, and you're you're absolutely right. If you are a person of color, you you pretty much get open season on yeah, racial comedy. Yeah, white people do yeah. this. And oh, by yeah. the way, if you're fucking Asian and you're a comic, stop saying white people, because then you're co-opting the black guy. The black guy can say white people. When you say white people, what that means is that person's been your oppressor. You're fucking Asian. You have not been oppressed. There's more of you. You fuck every five minutes. There's more of you than there are of us, okay? And you run the world, so you can't. No, it's cheating. I don't care. Come see me, don't come see me. If you're Asian, I don't think I would come. And uh, <laughs> so, no, but, but, the, but the, it's manipulation. And that's what I don't like. Like, just have an act that's not bullshit. And the reality is, like, I'm Italian. So if you're a European immigrant, right, I don't know what's racist anymore. I really don't, like, I, on some level. Because I'm a European immigrant. If you're French, Italian, Scottish, German, we assimilated into the majority. So now it's okay to make off-color jokes about us. And we laugh, like... You know, Italians are in the mob, which right. is actually true. My cousin Bobby is. And, uh, and you know, the Irish drink and all of that, right? Which is true. I which, drink. Exactly, right? So, I mean, my brother drinks. So, so but, but in 1910, which is just two generations ago, my grandparents came here. They were the minorities. But now somewhere along the line, it's okay. But like... Like, yeah, and the Italians yeah, I got a hated friend. the Irish. Yeah, right. my friend John, he's, he's Chinese, my friend John. And every time he sees me, every time he goes, hey, Paulie, Paulie, how you doing? I'm not Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't go, hey, John, how you doing, buddy? You know, I don't do that, right? But if I did, I'd be, so what I, my feeling is, is like, like, I don't know what, like Wendy's had a commercial for the Italian Tuscan sandwich and at the end of it, she like says, oh, I want to talk very loudly with my hands after I eat this. She literally said that and nobody <laughs> said jack shit. Right. And then I, I'm like, well, if that were the Mexican Chalupa special and she said, oh, after I eat this, I want to sneak into a country illegally and steal jobs. People would be writing letters. See, you put your head in your hand because you're like, I can't believe the white guy just said that. Oh. Fuck it. It's honest. It's fucking honest. <laughs> it's like the black comics that go the black guy voice and the white guy voice. They do, hey, baby, what's up? And then they go, hey, there's Mr. Buddy Boy. Like every white guy's like right. whatever. It's like I can't do that. I can't say Obama goes to the UN. What's up, UN? 
Like, I can't what, what, get away with any of that shit. What was interesting about uh, racism uh, is growing up here in the state of Florida, yeah. the ra- race to me, it was black and white. Uh, growing up, mm. and it wasn't until I met somebody from Waterbury, Connecticut, yeah, that uh, that he was telling me about That's growing not up. Far and, from where I grew up, and and racism is a great KKK chapter there. Uh, <laughs> he said race racism up north was very it's neighborhood to neighborhood. You got uh, your Polish guys and the exactly. Italian and the Germans. They all hated each other. Exactly. I grew up in an Italian neighborhood, and there were the Irish, and the Irish tended to be the cops, and the Italians tended to be in trouble. Not, right? not the cops, <laughs> right? Exactly. And so, like my f- best friend's father is an 85 year old retired cop and he still like refers to us as italians and like ah you guys are always getting in trouble it's ingrained in him and it's never gonna and and you know the irish kind of ran the city and the perception of them was they were kind of on the take a little bit and they were and uh and so it's totally that like there's the polish section uh, we're south, down here, though. They would all been the same. We would all been the same. See, but south, there's so, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. South, when you said South Providence, you went, that's where all the blacks lived. So you, you didn't go down there because that was the bad neighborhood, which was completely like racist. And like, I'm, I, I'm actually not racist at all. I got an uncle that was like, he hated black people. He hated anybody that wasn't white. He was Italian. He worked hard and he thought everybody else was on welfare and that they were just terrible people. Like, he was crazy. Like, he wouldn't wait. He was a dentist and he wouldn't serve black people. Jeez. He was crazy. It was like, it was ridiculous, right? So, I do think that, you know, like in New York, it's a mix. It used to be like that in New York, too, but I think the neighborhood stuff, it's like everybody's everywhere now. You know, except on the Upper East Side where it's completely white. With We have to wear white pearls even if you're a man and they're so rich it's up funny. there. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. Like it's uh, it, the na- the whole neighborhood thing was a big thing up in New England. And, and I think in some places it still is. But um, And I just want to ask you before we get you out of here, because thank you so much. You've been here for a, a long time with us. Oh, uh, I want to stay. Uh, the, the Improv Tampa all weekend long. Yeah. Uh, ImprovTampa.com or 813-864-4000. Yeah. But uh, early, you were there at the very beginning of what used to be my favorite show, mm. The Daily Show. Yeah. You were there at the very beginning. This was, was this pre John Stewart? Yeah. As well? Yeah. Uh, and you won an Emmy while you were there. You've won a couple. Yeah, Emmy, Peabody. Uh, so we're talking Kilborn days. Oscar. I uh, won a Tony. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. We would get away with stuff. Because we were experimenting with the show and trying stuff, and uh, so what about the political? The, the Monica Lewinsky, I mean, yeah, because it- this you guys fired up about that time. Yeah, we, uh, you know, that whole Bill Clinton Monica Lewinsky was going on and on and on, and then it turned a corner where she started to rehabilitate her career, and she was getting, uh, she had a, um, oh, she had a handbag line that she was coming out with or something. And, uh, and it got really, I got just, I got really incensed over the fact that like she was trying to capitalize. Yeah. You know, look, they were both at fault. She hit on him. He hit on her. Yeah. She was younger or whatever, but like they both had it coming. Right. And so I wrote this joke with my writing partner that was like, oh, this isn't the only thing Now you have to understand there were, we didn't know where the lines were and they wanted us to push the boundaries or we wanted to. So we were like kids like in the, with a chemistry set downstairs just fucking around and sometimes you blow it up. You know what I mean? But that's the best comedy because right. then it's not the sa- super saccharine sweet comedy that you see all the time. So, so we wrote this joke and at four o'clock we would rehearse but at like three o'clock every afternoon you have to send the script to like standards and practices so they have to check. For people don't know, every network has... Uh, lawyers that look at the script to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate or be sued over yeah get sued over or like the wording or whatever apparently you can't say cock holster anymore uh, you know because yeah Colbert said Putin's was his cock holster or whatever and it's like uh, good times but they bleeped it out they, that didn't actually make it out, did it? Uh, I think it did, and then it got, was controversial for a couple of days, and then it went away, but it was like, you know. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because uh, I love Colbert. I mm. love Jon Stewart. I think that The Daily Show has lost uh, its soul mm. um, after Jon Stewart left. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, what's his uh, Trevor Noah, mm-hmm. extremely uh, um, talented, mm-hmm. um, as is as are a lot of people on that show. Mm. But And this is what I mean by that because I, I, want, I want to get your take on this. Um I feel like when Jon Stewart was there, he, he, there was some, there's something else going on inside of him that, uh, that he is empathizing with the guest that he's, is on there. He's empathize, he empathizes with the crowd in front of him and the person watching at the same time, and he brought a certain, for lack of a term, soul to the show. You felt like he truly cared about, and it was like 
bothering him or affecting him personally right. and you sense that where that now, is t- completely a hundred percent wrong no i'm kidding the, right no completely right now you're completely right and and, and just let me say one thing right, to that audiences are very intuitively smart live audiences people at home and that's the problem with a lot of mass media is you don't give people credit for their intelligence like my father was high school educated he read the papers he knew what was going on but even beyond the iq thing people can sense if you're bullshitting them or not and it does has nothing to do with education. I know people that went to Harvard that have no sense of people. And I know people that barely got out of high school that have a great sense of people. And you're really astute, which because I first met you, I didn't think you were that bright. I understand. <laughs> and um, uh, no, John really did. It, it was in his soul and it came through. And I think that comes through to, to the viewers at home. I, I and, really do. And now uh, in contrast to that, I feel like the show that's on now might be a little bit more slick maybe even more jokes per minute, but it's lacking whatever it was that Jon Stewart brought to the table because it's almost what like... What do you think that is? Like sort of like, the, like a, that, the, that the people doing it have a... a they, they're, 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 it's almost a, like they took cues more from uh, what Colbert was doing and they're like all in this swarmy character. Like they're all in a pseudo Colbert character. Right. Uh, just, just trying to slice and dice the news of the day or slice and dice the people that they're going Instead after. Instead of having strong point of view behind yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's just the point of view part, but no, I just, really it's just not the same. I, I watch it and I can, I can yeah. sit there and on paper and go, Trevor Noah is really funny. He's really good. These jokes are good, but it's not connecting with me anymore. So yeah. I don't even really watch I mean, the show I, anymore. I've heard that from other people. I mean, you know, look, they do what they do there. And uh, I think that if, the, if you're really passionate about stuff, you know, um, then, you know, I decided to talk about the things that I talk about in my life, like getting arrested on Amtrak and pulling my pants down. In part, because I have a story about I accidentally shot a deer. Okay, now how do you accidentally shoot a deer? And and I'll tell you the story, then I'll tell you why I tell the story. Because I think the stand up, and I think the show, like Killboard, and then and then remind me to tell you the Monica Lewinsky story real quick. Going back to the Daily Show, Um, this I think it should the comedy should come from a place of truth and honesty and like and like because there's so little of that these days. Not that like we're going to change the world. So I got friends that like to hunt. I don't like to hunt. They hunt deer. I don't like to hunt. I don't like to kill animals. I feel bad. So they go hunting. We're at a buddy's house in New Jersey. And they come back and they get three deer. And big deer laying on the driveway. And then my buddy's house where I'm staying, he has a deer feeder like 50 feet away from his garage. And a deer walks up. And there's like four of us standing there in the driveway looking at the deer. And my buddy goes, hey, there's another deer. Paul, Paul, you should shoot the deer. No, I'm good. No, you should. You didn't shoot one. No, no, I'm good. He goes into the into the garage and he gets a crossbow. <laughs> he comes out and hands me a crossbow. I'm like, are we going to Middle Earth? Like, what the fuck is this, right? <laughs> so he goes, uh, he goes, no, I shoot the deer. I go, no, and and I'm like, I'm gonna and now. I I this is where I became a 12 year old pussy, and this is why I tell the story, because I was really disappointed in myself. I started making these weird like excuses instead of just saying, hey guys. I, and these are my good friends. It's not like we're going to stop being my friends. I should have just said, I don't like to shoot stuff. Here, take the crossbow back. Instead, I'm like, no, I'm going to miss it. It's going to run away. Why don't you shoot? I was like, nah, 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 nah. And they keep insisting. And then I go, I got this plan in my head. Uh-uh, I'm going to make everybody happy. And when you try to make everybody happy, you make no one happy, right? So I have this plan. Okay, I'm going to shoot at the deer, intentionally miss the deer, because I didn't want to see the deer get killed. I'll save the deer, and I'll look cool in front of my friends, and I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And this is, uh. So I've never, okay, shot a crossbow in my life, ever, okay? Is this my camera? That's my camera, right? Yeah. Okay, so I take the crossbow, and I aim, the thing's up on a little hill, so I aim with the crossbow, and I intentionally aim high to miss it, and literally as I pull the trigger, the deer walks right into the shot, and I nail it. Oh. Not only do I hit it, I hit it in the spine, it immediately oh. collapses like, uh, uh, making the most horrific oh. noises. Yeah, like, and all I could hear was like, Paul, why? 
Why would you shoot me? I was just eating berries. Like, what? That was really excessive what you did. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's trying to get up and it can't oh, get up. No. Yeah, and my friends are la- laughing because apparently this happens a lot. And they, and they put an arrow in it and they killed it. And I, I, go, I was really upset and I went into the bedroom where my wife was and I started crying. And then the next oh. day, I donated $150 to a wildlife fund that saves deer, <laughs> which I would not have done. Now, the reason I tell that story is because it speaks to my nature to want to get along with everybody and let people think I'm cool and not lose my friends. Right. Right. And that's the, that's why you tell those stories, right? Because it's not, oh, so I could get a laugh out of a deer falling down, although that is pretty fucking hilarious. Um, it's like, it's like, you know, it's the, it's, it's, it's the lesson there. Yeah, it's it's like you're passing it on. So to that's, your that gets to the thing uh, that you said about the daily show. It's like, you can sense the truth of it, right? You can sense, like, if you watch that bit, I'm pretty sure you're not getting a sense I'm doing it to just do a funny deer impression falling down, but I'm trying to say something about myself, which was I turned into a 12-year-old, and I should have just said to my friends, no, I'm not doing this, right? So, oh, Monica Lewinsky. So I do this bit, and we write this thing, and we say, and she's uh, getting endorsement deals and stuff, and we're so incensed, um, and we say, this isn't the only thing, um, and we put you have to send the script in to get reviewed so uh we left this graphic out intentionally because we knew they'd kill the joke and the joke was uh this is she's also getting endorsements from the milk industry and we had them put a cum shot all over her face that said got milk at the bottom yeah and they put it in the script like we didn't send that because that would have killed us that joke and it got on the air and the and the president of the network went ape shit he goes what are you guys what are you doing you can't but he was yelling, you know, like when your father yells at you, but he's proud of you at the same time, but he can't show it because it was like it was like he was yelling and kind of smiling. It was like, you, you know, you can't do that. He's like trying not to laugh. He goes, Wait. and they pulled the show and they never re-aired the show because they would re-air the show. And I have the graphic at home frame. And that's so great. we would like we would cross the line and then they pull us back. Right. Like that's what they wanted the way it to goes. do, you know? And then John came in and John made the focus to show more just on politics and the media's coverage of politics and bigger issues. Hypocrisy. It, or, yeah. Hypocrisy. Cause when it was Kilborn, it was, spread. it was more pop culture and Music. a little bit of politics. We used to do this thing and looking back, it was so mean. Remember the line in, uh, uh, when Belushi makes the speech in animal house and he goes, uh, Niedermeyer dead. Dean Wormer, dead. And then he says a third name. I can't remember. Dead, right? So whenever a celebrity died, we would start the joke with that and have the whole audience chant. So it was so bad. Like Dana Plato, she was like, which was oh, so yeah. fucking, it was so bad now. We like, Dana, Dean Wormer, dead. Dead. Dana Plato, dead. Yes, Dana Plato died today. And it was like so like... Right. It's like it was so inappropriate and so mean and like John like killed stuff like that, you know. But yeah, so the show just evolved over time. And then, you know, we always had the false positive thing going. So instead of you never hit it on the head, you never say Trump's a douchebag. You go, no, he's a very bright man. Just watch some of the things that he says. And then he says all these things like, I think that's the smartest man on the face of the planet. Right. So it was like that heavy dose of sarcasm, which you're getting. But sarcasm without passion and commitment to really it just comes off as execution of jokes. Is that, well, what, right. Was there ever the feeling early on that it would become the political juggernaut that The Daily Show became to really drive kind of the narrative in pop culture about politics? Um, I don't necessarily think early on. I mean, the, uh, uh, the, the people who created the show, Liz Winstead and Madeline Smithberg, were great. And, um, and, and Craig Kilborn was great at what he did. You know, he, he would read a, a, anything and, you know, he had a great delivery and stuff. I think once John came and then you, we started to see like the kind of buzz from the press about like uh, you know, the articles about what we're doing and, you know, focusing on John and stuff. You started to get the sense, I think, like, oh, OK, there's this is becoming a, a maybe something bigger than we thought. And then we won our first Emmy. And then that was like, oh, but you got to remember, we're still on a basic cable show. We're not like so you we were you're not getting like 15 million viewers like you would on CBS right. or something. So I don't think there was ever a justification to think, oh, yeah, we're huge now. But it sort of kind of creeped up, I guess. And and John really made it great. I mean, John, John came in and really like he editorially led the charge of like, you know, this is the kind of stuff we want to talk about. And he would read almost every book that a person came on with and asked really great questions he had a great segment with the lieutenant 
former at the time maybe she was the lieutenant governor uh, betsy mccauley uh of new york who was uh <clears throat> doing something regarding health care and john knew the health care bill better than she did he actually was quoting the bill and she couldn't like he, he you know so he really smart really fast mind and really just uh and and hired good people and really good staff and stuff like that. You know, I, I mean? made him laugh once. You did. Mm. Was he on coke? That had to be. Uh, uh, could, <laughs> well, I don't know. He was. He was doing the. You know, the the, the media junket via phone. Oh yeah. Uh, via phone. So uh, we had him on a radio show. This yeah. was, You know, probably oh five, oh six, somewhere around. Talking there. about the Daily Show, promoting the Daily Show or something. <sighs> Must have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, he and I, I I went to thank him for something. And, and this is this was my thing too when I was doing radio when the com you know comics came in. It was like in my I, if I could make them laugh, then I feel like I don't know I accomplished something. Little did I realize it was a pity laugh. Yeah. So uh, we're had on talking. And I go. I have to thank you for something and uh, for something old, you know older that you did. And he goes, Oh, half baked. And you know because that's where everybody. And I go, No, unleavened, <laughs> which was one of his early specials. Yeah. And, uh, and he goes, oh, and I go, yeah, because uh, Unleavened, I learned something, uh, you know, watching that sh uh, show. And he goes, oh, that, that something about rising bread or something like that. And I go, no, <laughs> I go something to the effect of, uh, no, um, that, that Jews killed my Lord and Savior, something, something. And he just starts dialing <laughs> because watching the show, my mom came in and uh, we start. Not, and next thing you know, we're talking about you know <laughs> Jewish stuff. And I go, so I have to thank your your program for you know striking up the conversation to find you know about this. Da, da, da. And anyway, the way I say it, it made him laugh, and, yeah. and then I felt accomplished. As, yeah, yeah, as that's a, not easy to do to make a comic, reading. especially. Yeah. Um, he had a great bit about like uh, Jesus was on the swim team or something. I don't know, and like. How it must have been tough growing up in Jerusalem because there were all these like heavy hitters in history and going to the high school there. I don't know. It was a really funny bit. And it, that was a really good special. And uh, I think he called it on Levin because at the time everything was unplugged. Like MTV unplugged was a big thing. And I think it was a play on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the show, the show and, uh, and then the Colbert Report came out of sort of a character that Stephen was doing on the Daily Show and then... You know, and I did. I had some segments on The Daily Show. I did this thing called Second Opinion, where I played an HMO guy that would talk to you, that would uh, <laughs> report on the latest developments in medical technology. But then we would never cover it. Like so, it'd be like, yeah, you can do that. But then somehow it would always come back to, yeah, but we're not going to cover this, right? So it was always. <laughs> so it was a way of like skewing, skewering the 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 industry without just going, boy, they're a bunch of jerk right. asshole right like right over the head with it so we would do stuff like that and um and then and then we get in trouble you know like and then then they laugh and they go don't do it again and uh and then we go and don't hold the picture back next time you knew where you were. no we just the graphic wasn't done i we, wonder how much that is going to change in the media world considering the current climate of the pushing the envelope because pushing the constant pushing of the envelope, especially behind the scenes in writers' rooms and stuff like that, leads itself to uh, a, a lot of in, what would be considered in most workplaces inappropriate uh, behavior, inappropriate talk, and so on and so forth. So yeah. I'm, it's going to be very curious to see in this phase of sexual harassment and, and whatever it is that we're going through right now, how this um, how this changes the pushing of the envelope yeah, um, I think culture. It, it, I think it might affect. I mean, I even say in my act like I don't know. I don't even compliment women anymore. Yeah. I'm just too afraid. I just salute them and say, I go, Thank instead you of saying service. you look nice, I just go, you look, and I leave it right there, you know? <laughs> but it's like... But that it's, in itself is a statement, too. It, it's it is. As to the where we are as a culture right, right now. Right. And, you know, some women have said, you know, uh, things that you almost hear what a guy say about sexual harassment. So there's a lot of different views about it. I mean, everybody agrees it's bad. And then it's quite like where you are in the spectrum. But I heard somebody say last night, well, all sexual harassment is equally bad, whether you did masturbate in front of somebody or you jumped on top of them and groped them. It's well, all that, well, okay. Well, that's that's assault. And the sexual harassment, though, the, uh, you know, complimenting somebody the way they look, right. uh, you know, that's now in the same category. It's making people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I'm walking in every day. Yeah. And the first thing you do is you talk to me about my hair and about the dress that I'm wearing. Yeah, but same, like, last night I was talking about race. And at one point I got a ooh on something. And it's a mixed race crowd. Uh, which, you know, I was really pissed about. I told them all, it's an all-whites only show, but, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to listen anymore. Nobody listens. That's the problem. Um, 
And I just said, I don't care to them. Like I said, it is what it is, you know. And it was, it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was talking about race and what you can say as a, as a white guy and what you can't say and all that stuff. And so, like, I think that you, you can't, as the people doing this, and you, it goes back to your question about, like, well, we're trying to figure out what we are and whatever. It's like, I think you should just be who you are. And then you're going to have your viewers come to you. You're right. And then you're, you're right. going to have people that aren't. Because you're, right. you're going to be here all day tap dancing, trying to make everybody happy. You're right. And listen, look at me. When you start trying to make everybody happy, I want you to say one word to yourself. Two words. Dead deer. Okay? And you'll remember <laughs> that. And I want you to hear. Because really, that's what it is. Like, there's... if. If you end up doing that, or you just go so down the middle that it's like nobody really cares. Next like thing you know, you've saying. killed an innocent deer, and you're going, what the hell did I do? I was right, trying exactly. to make everybody around me happy, <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't even thinking. Yeah, exactly. I just killed a deer. But I think that I think you should try. I think it'd be nice to see shows that aren't so partisan one way or the other. Like if you are going to go into politics, you know, go after, go after both sides because the system is broken. You know right. what I mean? And you remember, you didn't kill a deer. You just paralyzed him. You just crippled the deer. <laughs> so I don't know if that will help you rest easier at night. Uh, I have a podcast, by the way, on yeah. iTunes. And uh, I'd love people to check it out. It's called The Paul Mercurio Show. And uh, Weekly? Uh, yeah, I do it every Monday. And I do one-on-one -on -one interviews. And I try to get people from the different spectrum. So I, like I mentioned, I have uh, Charlie Sykes. I just had Chris Matthews on from MSNBC. Uh, Stephen Colbert, Artie Lang, um, Judd Apatow, Paul McCartney. I got Paul McCartney on my wow, show. Wow, jeez. Yeah, I got it. Can I tell you real quick how I got Please, it? It was crazy. Yeah. He was at the Colbert Report, and uh, he was doing a um, he was doing a, a you know a special uh, a special appearance on the show. I'm not being rude. I just got to find something. Um, and uh, I hate the way this get works. off your damn phone. We're trying to do something here. No, no, I got I got to find this for you because I got this is part of the thing. All right, so. Um, uh oh porn hey how you doing now um so he's finished rehearsal and i round the corner going to the studio and it's paul mccartney standing in the studio all alone uh in the hallway rather leaning up against the wall just the way you are like this just leaning up against the wall like this just like he's waiting for it's okay you don't have to move it. just like he's waiting for the bus like just leaning against the wall like that and i'm like holy shit and he's all alone he didn't have anybody with him which threw me right and i'm like oh my god it's paul mccarty like my whole world stops and i go over and i say i'm gonna say hi and leave i say hi and i leave and well he followed you out the door well come on who wouldn't you know he heard my deer bit and he thinks it's brilliant no i he comes back he goes oh come back he goes what's your name i go paul he goes oh paul that's a good name i'm like i'll do the jokes asshole all right this is, <laughs> since you just play love me do and get off stage you punk ass you know, uh, he goes, what do you do? I go, I'm a stand up. Oh, I like stand up. And you got a kid. Yeah, I got a kid. You travel. So we're talking just like we're talking now. And on the outside, I'm like, I'm smooth. I'm like, hey, I'm talking. On the inside, I'm like, I'm talking to Paul McCartney. I was like out of my mind. Like those girls you see in the film, like going crazy. Well, uh, I decide, okay, this is going so. And people are walking by me like, hey, Paul McCartney knows Paul McCartney. I don't know, know the guy. Like, hey, Paul. And you're like, hey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, him? Fuck him. Yeah, me. Right. And I'm looking over my shoulder waiting for like one of his security guys to tase me for talking to the guy, right? So I leave. I go into the bathroom. I call my wife. I'm hyperventilating, literally. I'm like, oh, you can't believe it. Oh, my God. She goes, where are you? I go, I'm in the bathroom. She goes, are you jerking off in the bathroom? I'm like, no, it's not Tuesday. And uh, <laughs> so this is all true, by the way. I know comics say that. But I, and so um, I hang up the phone and I go, and I love to talk to people about process. Like, that's the thing. If I had a hook for my show, although I really don't. It's like, I, like whatever you do, if you, have, if you host a talk show or you, uh, you know, if you lay flooring. Like, I like to, how, how, because I'm, I'm curious. And music is a thing I know nothing about. I like to talk to musicians. So anyway, I said to him, uh, I go to his dressing room door and I go, would you do my podcast? He goes, I'd like to talk to you about how you make music. He goes, yeah, sure. Just like that. Now I'm like completely. Terrible. Now what? Now what do you do? Right. <laughs> what? Because you're expecting. Go. Oh, why don't you talk to Jimmy? No, my, I'm expecting. No, I don't do that. Or, or the, what's yeah. a podcast? I'm seventy fucking eight hundred <laughs> years old, right? So now he goes, "How would we do it?" And I'm like completely thrown. And I met a fair. I worked with a lot of celebrities. I don't get thrown that much anymore. But now I'm completely frustrated. And he goes, "How do we do it?" And I literally, these are the noises I was making. I'm like, ah. Ah, uh, and I'm like rubbing my leg like I'm Rain Man. Ah, uh, I go, I'll come to London. And he goes, we're in New York together. Why would you come to London? <laughs> <laughs> I love your 
Yeah, totally. And then he gets worse. Then he goes, he goes, how, how is it easy to do? And I actually said to the most influential musician in the last century, yeah, it's really easy. Uh, you could do it on your phone naked from your toilet. I'm like, what am I saying? <laughs> So I'm like, I got to get out of here because I'm screwing up a good thing. I go, I'll just go talk to your assistant. He goes, no, they're going to mess it up. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you and I will do it. We'll just exchange numbers. And when I call you, you have to be ready to do it. Yeah. And I'm handing my number to Paul McCartney. And I said, I'm not going to fuck you, old man. And then I said, I'm going to fuck you, old man. You're a beetle. Fuck it. So I think I got the most professional blow off on the face of the planet. Yeah, like I would have thought the same thing. Nice guy. Knows how to blow people off without making them feel bad. All right. He does the show. Now I'm rushing to get to the Daily Show, which tapes three blocks away, and I'm late, and my uh, and I'm packing up my bag. So I my phone rings, and I don't recognize the mess the number, and I let it ring the voicemail, oh, and this is the message on my phone. Did you still? Have- hey, Paul, it's Paul McCartney here. Um, I'm gonna ring you back in five oh. minutes to do the podcast thing. I got some time now. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. So if you're there in five minutes' time, you call me. Okay, oh, bye. That is cool. I got him on the phone, and the first thing I said is, were you chewing gum while you were talking to me? <laughs> and then I had to stall him. You would appreciate this because you produce a show. My podcast studio was in L.A. at the time, so I call. I go, I got Paul McCartney ready first. I need a recording line. And this like intern douche goes, Oh, yeah, there's somebody in the studio right now. And I snapped and I went, did you not hear me? I said, unless you had Jesus Christ or John Lennon in the studio, get him the fuck out. I need a line. I had to stall Paul McCartney for 25 minutes. I I kept calling back going, I need five. Because I wasn't ready to do it. I didn't think he was going to say yes. I didn't think he was going to call me. And uh, and then I finally got him on the phone. And the first thing I asked is, you were a beetle. Why would you fuck a woman with one leg? And I thought that that was a very reasonable question. No, I. I oh, you. I, 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 I'm giving shit. No, no. I only asked him about music. Yeah. And uh, and he and he answered that. He said, easy access. You know, the half a leg is right. a lot easier. No. Um, he uh, he basically. The answer he, took, he always gives. Yeah, exactly. You know. We, we didn't talk about Yoko or any of the, all that salacious stuff. It was just about how he makes music and his stories when they were younger and, you know, their process. And that's really cool. Like he said, you know, we stopped touring because it was just getting crazy. Like it was like you couldn't hear the music. And we're in and they were all writing us off. Like all the people were writing, you know, the people of the pay, press was writing, oh, it's over. They're going to break up. And we were in the studio in London laughing because we were making this little album called Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Like so... He's you getting on the inside, that is cool. yeah. So inside baseball stuff. So yeah, so that's there and a whole bunch of others. So if you have an interest in, I did two episodes about the Emmy Awards with my acting coach and this great director, just talking about what the significance of the Emmys are and stuff like that. So anyway, it's there. It's on iTunes. It's free, and I'm uh, on Twitter and Facebook at Paul Mercurio. One R in my last name, not two. If you do two, there's an Australian actor. I, uh, you're right. Yeah, that's huh. that <laughs> son of a bitch. I had to change my name because of that prick and. Uh, <laughs> He's not even a good actor. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Okay, no. Uh, so anyway, it's at Paul Mercurio, M-E-C-U-R-I-O, and the podcast is at the Paul Mercurio Show on iTunes and Tampa Improv this weekend. And you go to improvtampa.com. And we're giving some tickets away, too. Yep. So, uh, for yeah. those of you who've been leaving comments after the show, we'll go back through that and uh, e- or we'll message you directly to let you know that you're on your list, and then I will email you that list yeah to uh, make sure and then you'll go to the uh, box office there with some stills from the porn shoot that you're doing next yeah, door that's right oh well, yeah now, now you and i have to di- uh, disrobe and go downstairs yeah. hey you're really great at this and this is a great setup i think whatever you guys figured out here keep doing it thank really you very fun. much appreciate it yeah i don't like the guy the colombian guy but otherwise uh <laughs> no you guys this is a really cool like i can hang. take care of that yeah and yes great questions and stuff and you have nice eyes thank you sir <laughs> paul mercurio at the improv all weekend long thank you so much for coming Thanks, by man. And so they, what am I getting paid for this? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you got to see this guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there's that producer who doesn't yeah, like black that, people in the building. Yeah, ah. <laughs> that producer. He owns yeah. the whole joint. <laughs>